Welcome to Eng Classes YouTube channel. In this video, we'll consider an example on properties of system. The system considered here is y of t is equal to x square of t. So I said y of t is equal to x square of t. The task here is to test is the system linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal, and stable. So here we are going to test the system for five different properties. So first, what I considered, what I consider here is the property of linearity. So I want to test is the system linear or not. A system is said to be linear if it satisfies the properties of superposition and homogeneity. So for that what I do is uh, let me explain what the system is. So here I'll consider an input x of t and I'll give it to a system of operator h so that I'll get the output y of t. So what the system does? The system does squaring. So whatever I feed the input, it squares and gets you the output. So here I'm feeding this system with x of t. So I'll get the output as x square of t. So this is what the nature of the system is. This is what the operator h here is. To test for linearity, what I do is, first I'll consider uh, two different inputs. So let them be as x1 of t and x2 of t. So let these two be are the inputs. I'll scale the input x1 of t with a1. I'll scale the second input x2 of t with the factor a2. Next I'll add them. I'll give this input to a system of operator h so that I'll get the output y of t. So in this case, I'll call the output y of t as y1 of t. So let this be y1 of t. So what is the output of such a system? So I can write the output if I understand the nature of the system. So I said the nature here is to square. So whatever I fade in, it squares and gets me the output. If I fade in x of t, I'll get x square of t. So in place of x of t, I have a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t. So what is the output? So I'll get square of that input. So it is a1 x1 of t plus a2 x2 of t square of this is the output I'll get it as y1 of t. So this is the first part of the linearity. So next what I have is, next what I do is I'll consider the inputs independently. So I'll consider x1 of t. What I do now is I'll give this to a system of operator h so that I'll get y of t. So this I call it as y dash of t. So what is the output now? I'll get it as x1 square of t. So after this what I do is I'll scale this. So I'll scale this output after scaling by a factor of a1. So I'll get it as a1 x1 square of t as part of the output y dash of t. Similarly next what I do is I'll consider the input x2 of t. Again I'll give this to a system of operator h so that I'll get the output as y double dash of t. So now what output I, I get now? It is x2 square of t. So I'll get it right. Then I'll scale it by a factor a2. So after scaling. So this is the output after scaling. So I'll get it as a2 x2 square of t as the output y double dash of t. So later what I have do what I have to do is I'll get the output y2 of t which is equal to y dash of t plus y double dash of t. So if I write that, I'll write it over here. y2 of t is equal to y dash of t which is equal to a1 x1 square of t plus a2 x2 square of t. So later I have to test is y1 of t equal to y2 of t. If this is the case, I would say the system is linear or else the system is nonlinear. So if I test, these two are not equal. 
so hence i say the system is non linear so it is not linear the system is non linear so this is what i have tested the first property so next i'll move on to time invariance so here i'll write the second property oh sorry second property i'll test it for time invariance so as the heading itself says time invariance means it must be invariant to the time it should not vary with the time that is what it is the definition of time invariance says that a shift in the input must lead to an identical time shift in the output so that is the definition of time invariance so first what what i do is i'll consider the first half that is a shift in the input i'll consider that first so input i'll take it as x of t a shift in the input means x of t minus t not it could be t plus t not as well so here i'm considering a delay x of t minus t not i'll consider as the input so now i'll give this to the system of operator h so that i'll get the output y of t so this equal to what so by understanding the nature of the system which is squaring whatever i give the input it squares gets me the output so now i'm feeding the input as x of t minus t not so that i should get the output as x square of t minus t not so this is the output so whatever i got now is a shift in the input so next what i consider is i'll consider shift in the output so that i'll consider y of t is the output shift in the output means y of t minus t not what is this equal to so to get this i need not have to do anything because i already know y of t is equal to x square of t from this equation how do i get y of t minus t not so in this equation replace every t with t minus t not so that you will get y of t minus t not so i would get this as x square of t minus t not as a shift in the output so later i have to test is y of t equal to y of t minus t not so i have to test this condition is it equal in this case both are equal so that i would say the system is time invariant it is tiv the system is time invariant that means it doesn't vary with the time it is constant it is invariant to time yes that's about time invariance so next what we do is we'll consider uh, sorry we'll consider the third property which is to test for memoryless so i have to test is the system y of t equal to x square of t does it have any memory or not so if i look i'll write the system y of t is equal to x square of t so i, su I should say that the system possesses memory the system possesses memory if the output at any given time depends on present uh, sorry if the output at any given time depends on past or future value then only i say the system has the memory so that makes the sense so memory system means it should depend on past or so i don't write plus past or future values of the input if they depend i would say the system possesses memory or else the system is memoryless so that is the definition of memoryless memoryless means it can depend only on the present value of the input so in this case y of t is equal to x square of t so it it neither depends on the past value or future values it depends on present value only so for example if i want to find y of t so what is y of y of 2 why what is y of 2 so it is x square of 2 so that means the output at time 2 is equal to square of the input at that time only so i need not have to remember past values or the future values so hence i say the system this system is memoryless it doesn't possess any memory it doesn't have any memory any memory so the answer for this is memoryless so next i'll consider uh, the fourth property which is supposed to be causality 
so i need to test is the system causal or not to test for causality the definition of causality says that the output at any given time can depend on present so i'll write just write it the output at any given time can depend on present or the past values but not on future values if it depends on future values the system is not causal if it depends on future values so if i write the system y of t is equal to x square of t so here if i see the system neither depends on past values or future values so it only depends on the present value hence the system is causal so i can clearly say that the system is causal as the output at any given time depends on the input at that time only so it doesn't depend on future values so now while consider the last one fifth one i need to test is this system stable or not i need to test it for stability so the stability must be bibo stable that is bounded input bounded output so i'll make the input bounded i need to test is my output also bounded in simple words i'll make my input finite i need to test is my output also finite that's what says the stability if i say the system is unstable so what i do is i'll make my input finite so such a such a system if it produces infinite output unbounded output i would say the system is unstable so in this case i'll consider the input as x of t i have the control on this so i'll take the magnitude of x of t so i'll make this bounded i'll make this less than or equal to any value that is mx the greatest value which must be less than infinity so i'm making the input as finite so what is my output y of t is equal to x square of t magnitude of this must be less than or equal to my any positive value any finite positive value less than infinity so is this the case yes this is the case so hence i would say the system is stable a bounded input gives me a bounded output so to understand this what i do is i'll consider any largest number any any number so let input be 10 to the power 6 square of this is it finite that is what i am testing here so consider any finite input square of the finite input is that finite yes as the answer is yes i would say the system is stable so now i have tested this system for all properties so first one i have to test for linearity to brief it up so i would say the system is non linear so next i have tested this system for time invariance i got it as time invariant so i have tested this system for memoryless is it memoryless yes it is memoryless so it doesn't have uh, memory i would say it is memoryless so next i have tested this system is it causal yes i got the answer as the system as causal as it doesn't depend on any future values so next lastly i have tested is it system stable i got the answer yes the system is stable so this is about the properties of systems thanks for watching